Offense wins because defense did not go two men removed on the switch to get the ball stopped right from the start, okay? So defense is off, offense goes to defense. Get it. Good. Let's go. Offense to defense. Defense gets a stop. Offense has to score. Defense has to get the stop. You all right? Foul, offense scores, defense off. So the other thing, when we force them to play this way all the time, you can evaluate if the two ball dribbling is working. Was that an uncontrolled dribble? Probably so. So you would lock in and make her focus on her two ball dribbling for game speed. Stop, stop, stop. Come on. You gotta get the ball stopped at half court. Defense off. Offense goes to defense. Change ends, change ends, change, change. Defense does not get the point because they got it wrong right from the start. We need one more, one more. I got, I got one more, Jillian. I got Vanessa. I got Jillian. I got Vanessa. Can you put it for me? I got Vanessa. Okay, I got you. Go back. Four, 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 four. Change ends. Stop. Good job. Get the ball stop. Get the ball stop. Stop, 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 stop. Come on. Nice play. Stop. Good. That's three. Okay, let's go. Th the winners sit there. 
Ladies, twice around, twice around. This way, uh -uh, clockwise, 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 please. Good. Let's go this end here. All the balls are down here. Let's go down here. All right. Everybody, everybody with a basketball, please. So if we're coming up this side of the court, what does that mean? We're going to walk through it first. You're gonna dribble left-handed. Your dribble's too high. Yeah. All right. You're gonna dribble left-handed. Come inside out on the cone. Inside. Nope. Nope. Just cross over here. Okay. Cross over here. Lower. There you go. Right hand. Cross over back left-handed. All right. And I want you to go down to that last cone there and stop and pull up and make that shot. Coming back, yep. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I moved that cone. Every once in a while you have to forgive the coach, he makes a mistake too. All right, so hold on. So the most important thing in teaching kids to score off the dribble is the last dribble has to be a low dribble. The reason for this is that the body is like a spring. The wider the spring is open, the less energy you have in your jump shot. It was one of the most important things I was able to get Vince Carter to understand. <clears throat> Waste, we're not wasting one jump shot. Because in my mind, it's not taking shots, it's making shots. So the last dribble is a lower dribble. All right, it forces your body together so that you have more energy to get up and make the shot. This is extremely important. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna go through the drill, take your time, do it right. Go through it twice, we'll change direction, and then I want you to speed up. But we can't have where you're doing two ball dribble and you're down over the basketball and then we're running the drill and you've got it up here under your armpit. Focus and be consistent on what we're doing throughout practice. Get down in an athletic position. Ball's no higher than your knee. Everybody's playing point guard. Everybody is being trained as a point guard in this drill. Go.
Last dribble is a low dribble, not a high dribble. Lower dribble, lower, better. Lower dribble, lower dribble. Take your time, do it right. Lower dribble, lower dribble. Lower dribble. Follow her. Just, just forget this one. Just come to the next two. All right, there you go. Good. Stop. So, ladies, let's think of the drill just like our two ball dribbling. Let's slow down. Let's get it right. Let's get our eyes up here on this rim. All right? If we make a mistake, we kick the ball, it bounces off, go pick it up, start over, and go back to where you're at. All right? Practice is where we're going to make our mistakes. And then we can clean them up in practice, and they won't happen in the game. So, slow down. Low dribble, no higher than your knee. Eyes up here in the rim, go. Again, I want you to outside hand, cross over. On every cone, I want you to cross over, all right? I want you to come all the way down here and bank, bank the basketball off the window. And, and your, your target, ladies, is where the white lines come together. Don't worry about the rim. Get the basketball to where those white lines come together. And I want you to shoot it right here. All right, one, one step off this block, please. Go.
Focus on what you're doing. Stay down, take your time, do it right. Change direction, change direction. Go on left. Lower dribble, lower dribble, lower dribble. Think lower. Think lower, not higher. If the ball's up over your waist, the ball's too high. Play from an athletic position. You do not have to be an athlete to play from an athletic position. You just have to learn to bend your knees and bend your back. Go. Stop. Everyone in here, please. Everyone in here. I want to thank you because you did a pretty good job not knowing what you were walking into. All right? But you need to get a chair at home and two basketballs and teach yourself to dribble with both, ha both hands. All right? And then once you do that, I'll show you how to, to cross it over from hand to hand, all right? Please give him a hand, please. You're done, get a drink, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, thank you. all right? Thank you. You're welcome, Dad. <clears throat> Balls up, please, balls up. Put them in the rack, put them in the rack, please. So, and, do, and don't leave. You make sure I get a picture with all of you, okay? So don't leave, all right? The, um, the whole essence of uh, what I learned is, uh, from going from a player to a coach was uh, the reality I walked into when I went to, uh, was drafted by the Lakers. <clears throat> Understood that I could shoot the basketball, but I didn't understand that when you play against better players, nothing's the same. All the angles change. There is no 10-foot shot. I run around Magic Johnson and I walk into Jim Jones and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and that was just no fun. So a lot of what I learned is out of, out of, is out of pain. I played six years in the NBA, never had a guaranteed contract, had to go to camp every year not knowing if I could feed my family or not. So what I try to do is give them the understanding that they really have to care enough about themselves to get in great shape and if they get in great shape, I know some of you may think that it's an awful lot of running, but the issue is I want them to be able to play a four or five possession game. In other words, we respect that the other team is good. We're not gonna win by 20 points. We're gonna win by three or four points. And they need to be in condition so that our opportunities are out of, and you've seen it here, they're a little fatigued. They get a layup. They think they would normally make it. They're not gonna make it because the stress level is higher. So what I try to do is create that stress level that's so high that when they go into the game, things are a lot easier. But it all, it all goes with, I gotta put enough in them that they care enough about themselves, they're confident in themselves, and then I have to slow things down. And yes, I may not win as many games the first year, but once they get fundamentally that they can play on both sides of the court, they can score on both sides of the floor, we are fundamentally a better team. And then I can go to the next lesson. But I don't believe that I go in and say, you know, I don't know their talent, so you got to run my stuff, my offense. Well, it just doesn't normally fit. It didn't fit when I was a player, and it doesn't fit today. What you're doing is awfully hard in Canada with your lack of resources, and I deeply appreciate the goodwill that you do show in trying to help the kids become better basketball players and advance themselves, but it's... It's very clear to me that if there was an evolution in my mind in Canada, it would be on the practice plan and the fact that you've got to get a lot done, all right, in a very fast pace 
so that when they do play that special tournament or go to the states to play, they don't sit there in awe. They don't have to be athletes to play in an athletic position. And that's extremely important for you to understand. People who play in an athletic position can be successful against athletes. So I, we try to build out fundamentally what we're doing every day. So every day is transition. Every day is two ball dribbling. We didn't do the mic and drill, <clears throat> but that's the other drill. That's the fundamental drill in what we do so that they can learn to score under pressure. The way I did it in high school, we had extra managers. We always kept count. So the player had to hit a certain count. They didn't hit a certain count, they, they ran. So as I told them, it's always, it's either your discipline or mine. And I would prefer that it becomes theirs. I try to bring myself down as a coach to their level and then mature them back up to mine. So do you have any questions as we end up here? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm responsible for the individual improvement also. So by me putting them all in the drill, then I get to see what they individually can do and can't do. So what I saw today was that when I put them in two ball dribbling and sat on them, they went slow, they did what they were supposed to. And then when I put the cones out here, they reverted back and when we went transition offense, they reverted back to the high dribble. So it normally takes a while of them continuously being drilled in, being in an athletic position. But the whole concept of AAU now has the kids standing up because they have a guaranteed playing time. So I was a bench player. I couldn't waste possessions. If I, they put me in a game, if I didn't do what I was supposed to do, the five or seven, first five or seven possessions, I was out of the game. So my, as a, my philosophy as a coach is train them as a bench player. So if I train all of them as a bench player where they maximize the possessions, then if they become a starter, it's better. But as an example, Vince knew that he was only going to play 30, 36 minutes. At six minutes in the first quarter, Tracy McGrady got off the bench and subbed for him or Doug Christie. The whole thing is get your work done and get it done early. If you don't get it done, I got another horse that's ready to go. So they learn to take care of their own business, which is the lesson you should be teaching as a carryover in life. Take care of your own business. You're going to be disappointed at times. Pick yourself up, pull your socks up, and move forward. I hope I answered your question. Next, please. Yes, sir. Well, the, no, the easy way to do it is to uh, film them so that they can see because today's kids are so visual. So no, that's, a, that's the way we had to teach Tracy. I couldn't teach Tracy out of the playbook. Tracy was extremely visual, so I had to take, put it on film and then let him see it. So no, it's not, you don't bend, all right? You get them to accept, okay, today I'm not very good at this, today I gotta look at it, and for a lot of the girls, but this is the first time they've ever heard it from a coach. All right, this is the first time someone's ever told them, don't let the ball come up higher than your knee. Because what I'm trying to do is that I'm giving them the information, and if the ball comes up a little bit higher than their knee, we're okay. But if I tell them, look, they can play with the ball here at their waist, and then when you go play a good team, they put the best defender on them, and every time the ball comes through their waist, it's gone. So that was a lesson I was, I had to play point guard my junior year at Indiana. We went to Purdue and there was a guy named Eugene Parker and he ripped me six straight times on national TV. So that didn't look very good at home. And so the head coach at St. Louis University now, Jim Cruz, took me and there's a drill I learned to do with a chair. You dribble up on the chair and then it broke me from doing this, all right? And your crossover is a drop back crossover. So. If I had more time, I'd have the girls sit on the edge of the chair and throw the basketball as hard as they could from left to right because I got to force them to learn how to use the opposite hand and trust it. So it's a process, but it's from the standpoint of when they can't do it, all that is for me is an indicator. I got to make a note, all right? They can't do this today and we, and we make a progression. 
So I'm not trying to win all of them the same day. They will progress at different levels. And, but it's extremely important because I just know when you play against better players, if your coach hadn't given you that skill, you're dead. Yes, sir. Right. And we can go into that drill, we can do that drill for two weeks and some of those drills are just off on again. You got fifteen here that are all relatively close to each other. Yep. Um, how do we advance? Do we separate out the most from cards and maybe work you know different skills with a different player? So okay, so what I did was that my first year as a high school coach, I got very frustrated that I had done a bad job from a teaching standpoint. And there was a coach in Cincinnati and he had this reputation for developing point guards. So I basically called him and paid him as a consultant to come in and put together a pre-practice program. So the pre-practice program <clears throat> and everything was charted. And basically by keeping it charted, I could tell who was having a good day and who was a bad day. Because they may have five or six days where they... So it was, it was all ball. It was <clears throat> ball slaps. All the, everything, the ball with the body, all right? Because what I, all I was trying to do is I explained to him, he was wondering why I was training the center. I said, because it may be a tight game and I need that center to rebound a basketball and take two dribbles out to release pressure, all right? And be able to throw the basketball. Because how many times have we seen a kid that we think he can't do this, he rebounds the basketball, they're pressing, and they take the basketball from him. So I, I think you have to, measure because your time's limited, right? In the States, we have a lot more time in the summer. So I'd get all my work done in the summer. So by the time we got into practice, the second year I knew who could do what and who couldn't. But more importantly, you have to talk to them about what they can do and can't do. Because I will accept a player who can't do something that they stick to, hey, I can't do that. And I'm gonna just give a great effort. If they'll communicate and give a great effort, coach, I don't think you can ask for more for a lot of players. Because there are a lot of people who love basketball, aren't very good at it. But they love it and they're there for the right reason. Any young person that's involved in an active lifestyle through sports is normally a pretty good person for society to see. So I understand your heartache, but you're just gonna have to do the best and figure out from a time standpoint it's a lot tougher on you guys because you don't have your gym all summer and you can run them through and it's an easier way to, to get through the process. So I understand that, but I've had them with learning disabilities. I mean, I had, my, my kids were, weren't the smartest kids in the world, but once I got them to give me their best effort, it seemed like everything worked out. I think you have a bigger problem if, they're not that good and they won't give you a great effort. One more, please. Yes. Yeah, ba basically what I'm trying to do is that, what, the question he's asking is that I, I make a reference in two days about playing inside the volleyball court. The, the reason I'm doing that is because when we do play that athletic team and they're long, if, you th if, you're, if your t players are throwing passes that are further than 15 feet, they're more than likely to get intercepted. So when I have them calling the name and going up and down and I tell them to close it in, it's, it's from the standpoint I want them to be more comfortable with closer passes. I don't want them standing out here and thinking they can throw that basketball 20 feet and nothing bad is going to happen to it. So for me, it's teaching them to play against the best and in the worst circumstances because if we play a bad team, we should beat them. We want to play the good teams. We want to be recognized as one of the good teams. We want to be recognized that we don't care where the game's played. Just give us an opportunity. And that's what I try to put inside of them every day. And I think that's, I think it's really important. I think 
the result is just as important as the process. And if you don't think the process is important, you're not going to get a very good result. Thank you very much.